This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Conan Exiles video. Today I want to talk about the changes that are coming to the Thrall system. Let's get to it. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do on the channel. This is just going to be kind of a discussion style video and I know some of you really like those style videos, some of you absolutely hate them, but if you are really against the changes that are coming for the Thrall, specifically the Thrall count cap, uh, just listen to this video please just like relax hang out and really just listen to what I have to say because I have a good feeling that by the time the video is over uh, you will be a lot less angry and be more on board with this change that is coming also I read pretty much every one of the comments from the initial video I did about this and I saw a couple trends one of which I want to get out in the open right now and that was just because I don't PvP means that I don't understand PvP and that could not be further from the truth. Uh, I guess the best example I can give for that is there are scientists that have never been on the moon, never set foot on the moon, but they understand things about the moon more than the actual astronauts that have set foot on the moon. So to think that just because I don't play PvP that I can't understand it is extremely naive because that line of thought could not be further from the truth. Now, with that said, I know a majority of you who are really angry about the changes that are coming to the Thrall system, specifically the cap, uh, are angry because you feel that your base won't be defended and you feel that you wasted a lot of time working to get all of those thralls and now they're taking them away from you and you are justified in that right and that leads us to the first part of this discussion and that is this game is still in active development i i realize that it's released and we all have this like theory on what we feel released means but in today's gaming market for for modern games these days release doesn't really mean anything these days it just it just doesn't you have games that nowadays that are released and they are 100 percent complete that's the game you bought that's what you get they may patch it later and do some bug fixes but that's about all the content you're going to get then we have games that are released that are just a shell of the full game and then they sell you the rest of the game in dlc form then we have games like conan that get released but the game is still in active development and it can just mean a wide variety of things and if you think for a second that this game is not in active development you're extremely mistaken to get the changes that they have put on this game in the past year, that's active development changes. And them trying to solve problems and, and change the way that the game plays as a whole, for example, leveling thralls. I mean, they specifically said that that was something that they've been wanting to add to the game for a long time, but never got the, or have yet to get the chance to do it until now. That's developing your game and especially if it's something that they had planned to put in the whole time and are just now getting around to it which sucks because you end up with situations like we're in now where people have put in a ton of work into a specific aspect of the game and now that's getting changed and i understand why you're angry about that i do it's total bs i agree with you 100 percent but I'm still 100% for this change. It's just something that should have been put into the game a long time ago when people weren't under the expectation that it wasn't going to be changed because you never saw this coming. They just broadsided us with this. I mean, we knew that they were going to, or that they were trying to limit thralls and get them under control because they are a plague on servers. And they did that with trying to do that with the food system and the, the decay system, but neither of those really panned out and those were just kind of bad systems to begin with. The cap was something that should have been put in the game from the get-go. I don't understand how they didn't expect this to happen. Like, what did they think was going to happen? And that leads us into the next part is for base defense, because if you are playing PvP and you have a giant wall, 
such as so and we're just gonna pretend this is a wall for a whole base pretend there's a whole base behind there and this this wall goes all the way around the base just pretend with me for a minute here as the game stands right now you don't have very many options for defending that base besides thralls i mean what did they think was going to happen people were going to actually use the traps i mean get comment down below if you've ever used the traps because that's something i'd really like to know if you've used the traps for anything other than leveling thralls are what people use because they're what deter people from attacking a base. Are they your best option? No, because they can easily be dealt with because their AI is really clunky and, and anybody who is experienced with the game can bypass them relatively easily and deal with them relatively easily. But people who aren't super experienced with the game, it's a complete and total deterrent to keep, you know, quote unquote noobs out of your base. So you see things like this because that's what you do, that's what you have to work with, but it's not efficient. And my point is, we need other things to work with to defend your base. And I think that that stuff is coming. You know how Funcom is by now, if you've been playing this game for any length of time, they've given plenty of hints that they're working on siege mechanics and reworking siege mechanics. And I honestly believe that the thrall cap is just the first part of that. Now, is it the best order? Mm, maybe not, but I have a feeling we're going to see more stuff to help defend your bases in the future. Because if you look at something like this, this is crazy, crazy inefficient. It's just absolutely crazy inefficient. Because if you look at the map, yeah, there's a lot of entities on the map at one time, but they're relatively spread out. And on top of that, a lot of different chunks of the map aren't loaded at one time. But if you get this and you have this all the way around your base, and then you have layers and layers of this in your base, I had one person tell me they had over 1,500 thralls in their base. So what do you think happens to the server when you look, let's just take a look at the map here. You got Tom, Dick, Joe, and Harry up in here, and they've got this chunk loaded, and they have a couple hundred thralls a piece. Then down here, you got uh, uh, Sam, Jill, and, and Jane, and they've got a couple hundred thralls a piece, and they've got a large chunk loaded down here. And then you got Bob and Harry over here who have a couple hundred thralls a piece and and they got the chunk loaded when they go back to, to their base what do you think happens to the server you see major major degradation in the server and that's not good now imagine you have something like this this is your base and every four to five down foundations you have a thrall or pretend that these are not thralls and where these thralls are, pretend that those are turrets instead. Pretend that those are actual structure pieces and not thralls. Now, they'll, they'll work similar to how thralls work because they'll have to have an AI, but they're not moving entities, which is a little bit less for the server to deal with because if I come over here to this wall here and one of these guys gets set off, they all get set off. Now, all of these thralls are going to try to clump up in one area and the server has to do the calculations for all, all of that. But if you have a situation like over here where you just have these three turrets, remember these are turrets, they don't move. All they do is turn and look and fire. So it's a lot less for the server to deal with. On top of that, they would have a larger range and you wouldn't need as many. Now, are we getting turrets? I don't know. I hope so, because that leads me to something else that I've been telling a lot of people is that thralls are not the answer to defense. Yes, they're what you have now to work with, but they are not the proper answer to having a stable server or defending your base. We need better options as a player base. And I think 
they were going to get that. I can't, I can't 100% say, and I could be wrong because I'm human. I make mistakes, but they've made a lot of little hints here and there, uh, that I've picked up on and made some comments about some stuff in the live streams and stuff like that. And I really think we're going to see some, some changes coming for defending your base here in the near future. The other thing I want to point out is that the new thralls, now, we don't know what those new thralls perks are going to be, especially for like archers. So what if one of the perks for the archers, once again, this is speculation, but what if one of the perks allows them to shoot multiple arrows or shoot faster or have a much larger range? You could use three of those larger range ones to cover a lot more area. We already know that they're going to hit way harder because we we saw the stats in the live stream. That thrall had like 22,000 hit points and a buttload of damage. So you already know they're going to get hit harder. If they have a longer range, you wouldn't need that many of those long range perks thralls to cover your walls as you would with these here because if one of those thralls that has it's an archer with longer range and does a buttload of damage can two shot a player then what do you need all of these thralls for but once again that speculation the main point that i'm trying to make is that and and as a player whether you're pvp player or pve player or pve conflict player you should want the server to run better because if the server runs better and more people are having fun, then that means there's going to be more people playing on your server for you to raid and have a good time with. If the server is all laggy because every time you log in, you're logging in, you know, 900 entities into one chunk and the server just freaking plummets because you use up all the server's processing power and then then you're over here loading into your base and Bob over here feels it. You, you don't think that he does, but he does. So I know that the change sucks. I know that the cap sucks because you're going to lose out on a lot of work, but you have to think on the bright side of the situation that in the long run, it's going to be better as a whole, it may even get more people back into playing the game. I feel for you. I understand that you're angry 100%, but don't be angry to try to stop the change now. Be angry that it wasn't already done. Express to Funcom that you're mad that this wasn't already done and make it known to other development companies that you're not going to support this kind of behavior in the future because honestly, that kind of thing is the real problem. And we know that the game was already rushed out of early access as it was, if you go back and you watch my my interview with Joel, he basically said that we had to cut stuff because we didn't have a choice. We had a deadline we had to make to please investors. And we see that a lot these days. And as players, we suffer the repercussions of that when something happens like this, a game is released, and then it's still an active development. Now, I'm glad that it's still an active de development because the game wasn't complete and it still needed a lot of features that it's getting now, but the player base is still suffering for it and it sucks and it's not good. And I understand that. But for the longevity of the game, I feel like the change that's coming is going to be a lot better. And the other thing and that I know is that's upset some PvP players is that they feel like they're going to have to consolidate their base and make their base smaller um, or break up their clan. And I think that might be something they're trying to do. They mentioned that this was not the most controversial topic that they that was going to be in this next patch. And I think one of the things that's going to kind of aggravate people a little more is I think they're trying to put a damper in alphas. Um, and that's a whole other discussion about alphas and how alphas affect the overall gameplay in PvP. And it's actually something that I've seen other games try to mitigate and give the possibility for people to take down alphas relatively easily. Easily. And I've kind of looked into it a little bit. And if you're interested in a video about that and me talking about that, let me know in the comments section because it's something really interesting that I've noticed a lot of other companies have taken notice of 
because of what alphas have done to Ark and what they've done to Conan. Now, I know not all alphas are bad, but there are a lot of bad alphas out there that their main goal is to take over a server, ruin the experience for everybody and run everybody off the server. Then they move on and they do that to another server. It's done on Conan servers and I've seen it done on Ark servers as well. And that's not fun for anybody. That ruins the experience. And, and while it may be fun for the people doing it, it actually runs people away from the game. And it's a problem that I think devs are starting to realize that is an issue that they don't want in games like this. I know that Wildcard has learned from it and they're trying to rectify that in their game Atlas. Uh, they've done things to try to make alphas want to play friendly with other players instead of harassing them and running them off of the server. But once again, that's a that's a big discussion for later, and I'm just speculating that that may be something that they're trying to do with this patch. Once again, I could be wrong, but I'm I'm almost positive we're going to see massive changes in the siege system here very soon. If not this patch, because they could be hiding it. We once again they alluded to that there was more stuff coming in this patch than what we know about. So it could be stuff that's coming in this patch, or it could be the next big patch that we're going to get and this is just kind of the forefront of it. So that's pretty much all I had to talk about. Hopefully that gives some of you a better understanding and helps cool down some of the rage a little bit because I've seen a ton of rage from the PvP community and I just want you to know that I understand why you are mad. I feel for you, but I hope that you can understand after this that the changes that are coming are for the better of the game. And in the long run, you're going to find a lot more enjoyment in the game because you're going to have a lot more people to play with. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and show your support until next time thanks for watching